Um, I just got one. We That's did. My, my son. Oh, hey. Hi, John. Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Where are you? I'm in New York in Harlem. New York. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Oh, welcome back from Montana. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. It's definitely different here. <laughs> it is a bit. <laughs> Why would you come back from Montana? Oh, just, I wish I didn't. <laughs> he lives this way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I live oh, here. So Montana was the vacation. It was, yeah. Well, I do want to thank people for being here, um, both our own people for coming to listen, and Gail and Ron, Linda and Jessica for coming to speak to us about uh, food insecurity. Um, they are with Family and Community Services, the umbrella organization for DIFAN, our congregation has a long history of having a heart for working with hunger in our community. And um, uh, it is our understanding that the demand had shifted even before this crisis. So we were kind of interested in really just anything you had to say about um, your work. Yeah, most people on Zoom, we usually use the gallery view, which you're welcome to keep doing. But if you are interested in it, because it is a guest speaker, you might want to switch yourself to speaker view to just look at the speakers if you want, but it's up to you. So I'll hand it over to Ron and to Gail. And if anybody else pops in along the way, we'll just let them slide in and catch up on their own. So thank you for being with us. Um, Gail, do you want me to start? Do you want to start? Yes. No, okay. I want you to start. Okay. <laughs> um, so just a brief introduction. I'm Ron Powers. I'm the executive director of Family Community Service of Delaware County. Um, and um, as Karen mentioned, um, Family Community Service is the um, administrator, for lack of a better term, um, of the DIFAN um, network. Um, and Family Community Service and 15 um, different food pantries throughout the county um, are what make up DIFAN. And we work very closely um, with um, county offices. Um, so that includes Gail, Jessica, and Linda, who are also on the call. Um, one of the things I've found in the last couple of months, um, you know, I've been with the organization for about a year and a half now. Um, and, you know, so I've become familiar with the 15 pantries that are part of the DIFAN network. Um, what I didn't know is what other pantries were out there. Um, and what Gail has found out a lot in the last couple of months is um, all the different pantries that are operating in different parts of the county that aren't part of the um, DIFAN network. Um, hopefully that will give us opportunities moving forward to um, create working relationships and collaborations. Um, but that, that's to be seen. Um, now, in terms of DIFAN, um, the role of Family Community Service is the resources that come from the state, um, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, um, pass through Family Community Service in order to have the food pantries be able to purchase the food that they distribute. Um, one of the things, um, just to give an idea of um, where things are as a result of COVID, on a state level, um, food pantries serve about 2 million um, people a year. Um, what they found in the last five months, or excuse me, last three months from a recent survey is that um, these same pantries have served over 5 million people just in those three months. Mm -hmm. um, so significant shift um, statewide. One of the things that we're seeing with the pantries um, is that um, we're seeing an increase. Um, I looked at some of the data and, um, you know, in eight months before COVID, um, we saw about 60,000 people. Um, in the last three months, saw about 23,000 people. Um, now, going from an average of probably about 7,500 people a month to 
8,000 people a month um, sounds like, well, it's only an increase of 500 people. Um, but what's significant is the people that we're seeing are people that have never accessed the food pantries before. Um, and we've also seen that some of the people who have accessed pantries before haven't been during the last couple of months. Um, and we don't have a complete answer for all of that. Um, you know, we can definitely assume that the increase in new people accessing the pantries has to do with the people who are um, recently unemployed, um, hopefully temporarily unemployed, um, and needing those food bank resources. Um, a lot of the people who normally access the pantries, um, we get a, an older crowd, um, people with other health conditions. And so I think that is one of the reasons why some people may be staying away. Um, in addition, in the last couple of months, um, one of the things we've done is implement home delivery of food boxes. Um, and that's specifically for people who are sick, um, people who are elderly and um, at greater risk going to a food pantry um, or people with underlying health conditions. And just in three months um, have delivered to, um, let's see, it was 530 households, um, a total of 1200 food boxes. Um, so I'm guessing that some of the people that we're seeing through the delivery are people who had access pantries before. Um, I definitely know in some areas there are overlap like that. So um, in terms of the, the increase, I mean, one thing that I can mention is that um, some of the pantries um, have had a decrease in activity um, over the last three months, um, partly because the regular um, consumers haven't been accessing. Um, but there are other pantries that have seen as much as a 58% increase in utilization. Um, and interesting, I, I find, um, is that the pantry who's seen 58% increase is actually in media. Um, and again, my assumption of that one is that it's closely tied to um, being recently unemployed. Um, so I just rambled on a lot there. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's specific questions. Um, what, um, what about the amount of giving to the food banks? Has that stayed the same? Um, definitely in terms of um, uh, financial donations, um, I've seen um, a significant increase um, in terms of the donations that come into us that are specifically saying, we would like to donate to your emergency food distribution. Um, so um, that, that has been an increase. Um, Gail could probably speak to um, the giving in terms of what has occurred in food drives, because um, she's been instrumental in coordinating that um, in the county, the various food drives that have happened over the last couple of months. Um, one more comment I'll make, um, something that Karen mentioned at the beginning of the call is how Marple Presbyterian has collaborated with um, St. Mark's, one of the Daifan food pantries. Um, and um, that I think is great. Um, because um, there are so many faith communities throughout the county. And I've heard from some that are interested in saying, you know, we'd like to start a food pantry. And it's like, well, that, that's great, but there's another one three blocks away. Um, you know, if you happen to have a church in Upper Darby you know of, please let me know. Um, you know, because there are places where I know at least Daifan does not have a presence. And Upper Darby being the primary one where um, the levels of poverty are high. Um, but again, right now, Daifan does not have um, something there. Um, the other thing, and this probably um, 
fits in with what Brittany was asking about also um, is in terms of giving, um, there's definitely people can give financially. Um, and as Gail knows, people have been donating um, food to pantries. Um, one thing that is, is very important during this time is volunteers. Um, with all of the um, 15 Daifan food pantries, all of them are primarily volunteer driven. Um, again, they're all or most um, church communities um, and everyone's a volunteer. Um, one of the things that we're seeing with some of them is that their regular volunteer base um, were often um, elderly people in their congregation and stopped volunteering um, you know, for, for safety reasons. Um, and so um, volunteers right now, and I, I assume um, going forward uh, are gonna be an important um, resource for all of the pantries. Mm -hmm. I'll shut up. <laughs> Ron, when you mentioned before about delivering boxes of food to 500 and some, mm -hmm. is that for a week? Is it for a month? Is it uh, uh, what? Um, each each box of food has um, the equivalent of 15 meals, um, and so um, the reason why it's 530 households and over a thousand or 1,200. Um, boxes is because we do one box per person in the household. Um, because those resources, you know, have um, been tight. Um, I mean, again, we've, we've, um, there's been a lot of generous donations that have helped with that. Um, we um, have limited it that um, a person can access it every two weeks. Um, and um, so we've had some of those 530 households, um, some of those are duplicated. Um, the latest numbers I ran was that there were probably maybe 150 households who have accessed it more than once. Um, and one of the things we also do in those food boxes is we put a food pantry list and food pantry schedule in every single box um, so that people are aware of um, the food pantries in their area. Because, um, you know, again, the, the way that this delivery works is people, um, caseworkers, medical providers um, refer directly to us. Um, and um, what we found is that some um, weren't aware of what was in, um, in their neighborhood. One day I got a referral um, with a list of 71 people um, all in the same building. Um, but it turns out that that, um, that building was a block and a half away of one of the Daifan food pantries. And so what we were able to do was connect them up with Chester Eastside, um, which is the food pantry. Um, so again, um, people aren't always aware of what is out there. And I think a, a positive if there's anything that positive can come out of, of COVID um, is that you know, we have people utilizing this resource that have never utilized before um, and may not have been aware that um, pantries were out there and that they were available to anyone who needed them. Um, and I think that as we move out of this, um, that awareness um, hopefully will will translate into um, people choosing to give back, um, whether that's through volunteering or donating food or donating money. Um, and again, a greater awareness of, you know, these networks of, of pantries that are out there. Oh, and one thing to add um, to um, Stacy's question. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Gail. I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you get me started. I, I just can't shut up. Um, I, I will um, mention that in this food delivery, um, we have partnered with um, Community Transit. 
So um, during these months where they're not transporting people to medical visits, um, they have been assisting us in um, delivering food boxes um, to people. So um, that's a shout out to Community Transit. They've been wonderful to work with. So thank you. Now I'll shut up. <laughs> So I can speak to the food drives that you may have seen happening around the county. And um, they started because State Representative Jennifer O'Mara from Springfield, um, she did the first one on her own. She just put it together and they collected like 12 pickup truckloads of food and um, had people from Glen Mills School assisting along with some other entities like unions and and things like that to deliver the food to food several food pantries theirs went to three food pantries so then it got us thinking that we wanted to do something on a on a bigger scale as well so county council and jessica and linda and i and ron we were talking about doing them and making them in larger areas. So the first one we did was Upper Darby High School. So that took in like, you know, whatever senator and representative, they would get behind it and they would publish it on their social media. And that afternoon we did one at Park Lane Elementary in Yaden. The next week we did one at Glen Mills School. Um, the next week was Land, no, was Norwood. And then in the afternoon, it was Radnor um, Police Department. And the following week, we did it at... You're a genius. Uh, the following week, we did it at um, Lansdowne and then Linwood. That was hard because it was a traffic jam on 95. So we were a little late getting to Linwood, but um, we tried to get in seven of them in four weeks. So it worked out really well. We would have food pantries and when I say food pantries, this is where I contacted independent pantries, not Dyfan pantries, because they seem to be getting the money and the food. The, um, a, a lot of money was uh, put into Chester in a April, towards the very beginning, from Aqua and somebody else, I forget who. And so they donated chunks large chunks of money to chester and they needed it if we're not I'm not saying that but the other areas that needed it were the eastern part of the county like fallcroft sharon hill yaden darby um there is there's one Dyfan pantry in darby there's one in sharon hill but it wasn't enough the um mayors and council people from those areas we're contacting county council, asking for food. How can we get some more food? So you may have heard about farmers to family food boxes. And that was from, it was coordinated out of, well, it was coordinated by the state and large vendors got the awards of the boxes. And then it trickled down to smaller entities like us. Dyfan is a food pantry system. Fill Abundance, which you may have heard of, is a food bank system. And they're two different animals. And Fill Abundance actually got us connected to some of those farmers to families food boxes, which was wonderful. We also got another connection through a county council person we would get those food boxes on a Friday. The first two weeks, I think we set up delivery. We would go pick it up in Philly and then deliver it. After that, we would just have a municipality go pick that food up. So Sharon Hill, Fallcroft, Collingdale, um, those places would pick it up and they could distribute right to their residents. And it didn't have to go through a pantry. It just you know, was easy for them. So that worked until the end of June, and then that stopped. There are some other farmers to family boxes that Ron gets for Dyfan pantries, and he gets those on Tuesdays. 
know, in the beginning, we were all real happy about them because we heard they were going to be produce and dairy and mixed and meat. Well, I don't know anybody who saw a meat box. Mm -hmm. And dairy seemed to only be milk, never the cheeses and things that we thought we were going to get. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's not what we thought initially. The produce boxes were all very good. So um, those boxes come on Tuesdays. And I think that's the only boxes we're getting now, Ron, is just the Tuesdays delivery. Um, that's, that's all I'm aware of right now. Um, and I did find yeah. out from a um, municipality, no, actually, it's, it's AIDS Care Group in Sharon Hill. They contacted me last week. They're getting milk on Thursdays. And so they wanted to put it, it's four pallets of milk, one gallon jugs of 2% milk. So we notified the surrounding municipalities um, so that they could go and just pick up milk. And that'll be tomorrow between 11.30 and 4.30. Last week was their first week and it did take them to almost the whole time, but they were able to donate or distribute all of the milk. So that worked out well, but that'll be from now through the end of August that the book will be available on Thursdays. So there, there are donations available and sometimes it's like, we get a phone call saying, uh, we've got 1,500 meals, uh, where can we take them now? And not one place has somewhere to store 1,500 meals. So it's kind of like, you know, figuring out where they're gonna go. Uh, Glen Mills School has been a very good partner with us throughout all of this because they are looking to reopen in the fall and um, they will bend over backwards to help us. They printed signs for us for our food drives. They came and helped at every single food drive unload cars. Um, they've even um, housed some of the food that we got so till we could get it delivered to somewhere. So um, they've been a really uh, strategic partner in getting things accomplished. Any questions? Well, we are looking. So our food drive stopped June 20th. And then we thought we'd take a break through at least through 4th of July. And right now, because of the CARES Act, Ron talked about, the food pantries have a a generous amount of money that they need to spend by the end of December, and it has to be spent on food. So they, and it's not like we hand them $2,000. They get to spend it through a vendor and Ron pays the vendor and the vendor delivers the food to the dye fan pantries. Now, what we're thinking about doing is actually even expanding that to the independent pantries but we need to talk with them because that there has to be some paperwork to follow up with this money. It's just not like, you know, here you go. And part, part of the reason people are independent pantries are because they don't like paperwork. So uh, we have to talk to them to see if they're willing to accept the money, you know, and, and do the responsibilities to, to get that money. So we'll be meeting with them soon about that. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of what goes into that, it's a trade-off. Um, you know, smaller pantries um, may think, you know, I don't want to do all this paperwork, um, which isn't that much when you come to look at it. But um, the difference is in terms of the resources that may be available. Um, because, you know, going back to an earlier question, um, each of the pantries um, who receive these um, resources each time a person comes into the pantry is getting the equivalent of 15 uh -huh. meals. Um, whereas um, pantries that don't have these types of financial resources, you know, people may get a loaf of bread and, and a jar of peanut butter, which is great, you know, that will help. Um, but um, again, to be able to give the equivalent of 15 meals to a person each time they come in um, is a significant difference. Um, and so, yes, we are going to be looking to um, to assist with some of the independent pantries um, without duplicating, um, 
you know, having someone three blocks away um, so that we make sure that the resources are spread throughout the county where they're needed. We also had two pop up, um, pop up pantries because they're really not pantries, but it's uh, in the Upper Darby area, and they're for the um, both of them are for the immigrant population because what they have found out is there are people who could qualify to go to a pantry, but they don't because they're afraid because of COVID but they were afraid because they're an immigrant or maybe they're undocumented or so they don't want to go sign anything or, or do anything. So um, these other two places have um, been able to connect with those people so that they're getting the food that they need. And um, we were able to give them a lot of food during the food drives. So when you do the food drives, I don't have this well articulated yet. Usually we just collect things uh, at our own building and then we take them right over to St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. So that means we're only thinking about St. Mark's. Would it be more helpful if we went to one of these bigger drives and it were to go to the area of greatest need instead? Or are they- It would be helpful, but I can tell you that when St. Mark's gets something, and if they get more than they can use in a standard amount of time, they share it with another pantry. Huh. So it's not, because a pantry shouldn't let something sit on their shelves more than, I think it's 90 days, Ron? Yes. Yeah, it's 90 days. So there, it's not sitting there. Um, but I can tell you that we are thinking, when I talked about it, we stopped the food drives for right now. And because, of the CARES Act and seeing that the pantries were still getting the food that they need right now, that we didn't schedule a food drive, but we are considering doing one night out, which is Tuesday, August the 4th. We haven't gotten the okay yet, but I think if I keep telling everybody, they're gonna to have to do it. So uh, it would be, our thought is it was do it at Penn State Brandywine campus, and it would be a drive through event but we would collect pet food, people food, cleaning supplies, and baby items like diapers and wipes so that we would have like four different stations and to make it a, a countywide event and possibly giving anybody who drives through a gift from the county, undetermined right now. So um, we were thinking that that would be a good way to celebrate National Night Out since most municipalities had to cancel it because of distancing. So we're working on that, but we don't have the answers yet. So this would be on this Tuesday, August 4th, for right. people to bring things to you? Yes, or for people, people to, to donate. Pick up. This is to donate. donate. And then once we find out if we're doing this, then we'll get, we have to figure out how we're going to get it to the pantries or if they're gonna come pick it up. Cause I don't want them sitting there for however long, like they do a food drive, a food drive is three hours. So they're there from, um, well actually yeah, from ten, nine to one, they're there and they get the food as it's um, dropped off so that we only touch it once. So we take it out of a car and put it into a car. Um, for this one, I think it would be a lot more food, so we would have big trucks there to just put it in overnight and then figure out distribution the next day. You know, we could have the, the baby hmm. items separated and the pet food separated. Um, the, the county has been doing diaper drives where to where they drop them off and then where we you, you can come and pick up diapers in the size that you need. And they do diapers, wipes, and formula. So we've done three of those already, and we have another one for the end of this month. Um, to go back to what um, Karen was saying in terms of, you know, giving food to St. Mark's versus 
to a general food drive um, where the food go everywhere. Um, you know, right now during COVID, we're, you know, acutely aware of the food insecurity that's out there. But I think that we also need to be thinking about um, what happens after COVID um, and what has existed before COVID. Um, you know, in Delaware County, um, at least the DIFAN network um, usually sees about 2,500 households a month. Um, and so it was a need before COVID. It's a very strong need during COVID and it will continue to be a need after COVID. And I think it's really great that, um, you know, your church group um, has built a relationship and a collaboration um, with a pantry in your area. Um, and the benefit of that type of a relationship is um, you can then be specific in terms of, you know, hey Maria at, you know, at uh, St. Mark's, um, what do you need? Um, and, you know, as opposed to, I remember back when I was a kid, when we'd have the food drives, I would always take the can of cream style corn out of the cupboard and, you know, donate that at school, you know, and so you, know, you have a food drive and everyone gets all the beets and cream style corn. Um, whereas, you know, if you can say to a pantry, um, what do you need? And they can say, we need cereal, we need bread, we need um, proteins. Um, that way, um, again, that relationship, um, you can keep communicating what the needs are and uh, addressing the specific needs in your area. Uh, I know one of the other people here had earlier, um, before, before tonight's call, had a question about um, how people qualify. So um, there are income limits um, that the state programs, the state food purchase program, um, and another um, government resource we have um, that, again, there are certain income requirements. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what the different levels are, um, but it, it's based upon um, the number of people in the household and the total household income. One of the things, and in doing that, a person who goes to a pantry doesn't have to bring um, any type of proof of their income. Um, normally what happens when someone goes to a food pantry and they're there for the first time, they fill out a form which is called a self-declaration of need, um, which is you know, their name, their address, and the configuration of their household, how many adults, how many children, how many seniors. Um, and then they check off on this list that has all of the income requirements, what level of income is for their family. So, um, you know, it's an honor system where, you know, you know people, again, self-declaration of need. Um, what has happened during these months of COVID is the state has waived us collecting that form um, so that, you know, one of the the things the pantries are trying to do um, is readjust how they do their distribution. So, you know, whereas people used to go into the building, you know, they do distribution outside of the building. They keep people six feet apart um, and they try to move people through quickly and to stop and fill out forms um, and, you know, be passing pens back and forth and pieces of paper back and forth. Um, it just didn't seem like a good idea. So. Um, there had been a waiver of doing those forms, um, but anyone can go in um, and, again, identify that, yes, I have a need. Um, this is my income level. This is how many people are in my household. And I'll, um, I'll that people um, should only be going visiting a pantry once a month, and you should be visiting the pantry that is you for your specific Tam, um, you could go, so say you live in Springfield and you went to Upper Darby and they said, well, we can, give, we can give you food this time because they don't want anybody to go hungry. But the next time you should go to, and they would tell you the place in Springfield where you would go. So, but in times of COVID, the independent pantries, as far as I know, have not been refusing anyone 
anything so that people could go there once a week if they were so inclined. And, you know, while we encourage people to go to the pantry in their immediate area, um, you know, with the Daifan pantries, anyone can go to um, any of the pantries um, in the county. The only restriction is that they have to be residents of Delaware County um, because there are certain resources that are allocated for Delaware County um, and there are certain resources dedicated to um, Philadelphia County. Um, and so um, that's the one definite dividing line where um, people can only access in the county they live in. Do you have a mailing list or anything for how people find out what volunteer needs you have in general or for some of these larger ones that aren't tied to? Um, we, we don't. Um, and again, that's one of the things that we're learning um, during this COVID stage. Um, because all of the DIFAN pantries are um, church-based, um, every pantry generated their own volunteers. Um, and, um, and again, the volunteers were coming out of their congregations. Um, what we found in the last couple of months is some of those volunteers aren't available. And so there are other needs and, um, Gail could talk more specifically to this, but some of the pantries have utilized, um, a volunteer core that, um, is available through the county, um, I always forget the name of it. It's Citizens... Citizen Corps. Citizen Corps. So Citizen yes, that's Corps. what I was just going to say. So um, you can, what I can do, Karen, is I can send you the email list, not the email list, the die fan list, and that'll just give you all the locations. I but, got that. Okay. So do you also know, and all your um, people on the call, that the county has a food map on the county website that will list all the food pantries I've become aware of, as well as the DIFAM pantry, and it lists their hours of operation. You would go to the county main site, which is delcopa.gov, and then on the home screen, you'd go to um, coronavirus, and then in the lower right-hand corner, it would be food something. Um, forget food assistance, maybe? We could find it, and then and then in there, in, in, there's a there's a really long link, but it takes you to the um, food map. In during school time, it also listed all the grab and go lunches that were available from all the school districts and where you could and what times they were. Um, I think they've all been removed as of now, but all the food pantries are still there so that you can find and some of like Salvation Army does a meal program, so that's listed on the food map. So, so that, that's available too. But the Citizens Corps is called Delco Citizen Corps. And right now they have over 700 volunteers. And remember when Glen Mill School was set up to be um, a mini hospital yeah. and they were recruiting more volunteers, that was through Citizens Corps. And um, Citizens Corps is also the one that's out there helping right now with COVID testing where they've been set up at like Sharon Hill and Darby, Broomall last week. They're also helping with our food drives. Um, so that we have probably eight to 10 people for each food drive to help us with collections. And they also help with food pantries like Ron said. We've had several food pantries that have asked for them to help. One is Loaves and Fishes. That's the biggest food pantry in the county, Prospect Park. And um, their volunteer base was down to like, you know, almost nothing. So Citizens Corps has been helping with them uh, twice a week. And Chester Eastside, I think, is the other one that they just started helping with. So um, if you, you can set up to volunteer with them, and then there's lots of opportunities. They send out a, a general email saying, you know, we need 10 volunteers, such and such a day, and what it is you're gonna be doing. Um, I was unloading food 
with a woman who I found out at the very end was a doctor. Mm -hmm. So there are people of all walks of life um, doing volunteer work. Uh, at the same place where the doctor was, there was a young girl, and this was in Radnor, and she was going to take a bus all the way back to Upper Dart. We had somebody drive her home. But, I mean, people will just volunteer, and there, there's lots of opportunities to do many, many things. And to do that, you would go to, they have a Facebook page, it's Delco Citizens Corps, and if you um, check with them, there's an online training before you get started. And then, you know, you can do as many volunteer works as you want. Anybody else have questions? I'm doing more than my fair share of asking the question. <laughs> no, we're here to answer all of them. <laughs> what kind of preparations? Yeah, very interesting. Now that school has um, sort of decided what they might or might not be doing um, for families that uh, are used to getting help with breakfast before going to school and that kind of thing? Uh, are, are they? Well, right now through the summer, school districts that qualify for those breakfast and lunches are still yeah. doing their breakfast and lunches. Upper Darby is still doing breakfast and lunch for their children. Um, People have to come and pick them up, correct? Yes, they still have to. And what they've, most of them have done have switched to like um, two times a week so that on Monday they get Monday and Tuesday and on Wednesday they get Wednesday, yes, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Okay. So that they were doing it every day during the school year, but um, towards the end, that kind of switched. Right. There are some school districts that don't qualify for that some like a summer meal program so they just weren't doing anything and then there were some who were not connected to a summer meal program that the county actually got an offer from the urban league of philadelphia and we connected five places to get five uh, i think it was a weekly delivery so five meals at a time uh, for those kids. Uh, that started last week. There was also the opportunity uh, for those who were receiving um, free meals and uh, they were putting the benefit amount on the uh, parents EBT card, their access card. Um, I don't know, Gail's been wonderful about keeping in kind of in tune with what's going on. I don't know if we've heard yet as school districts start to make their plans for the fall, you know, as we say, the kids may go to school half a day instead of a yeah. full day, what that will look like. Um, but there is concern, you know, if kids don't have access to that free lunch, uh, what that will look like nutritionally for the household. So I right. don't think plans have been discussed. I know um, Gail's part of like a feeding task force and that's where some of that information comes out before it kind of hits the bigger scene so Gail will right I, I attend a weekly call of, um, with the state and that hasn't been discussed yet because just on my way home from work today I heard that a school district was going to go uh, in person two days a week and remote three days a week so I don't know what this is going to look like I don't, and I don't think they know yet what it's going to no. look like or how they're going to work it mm. We did put on our Facebook page um, where people could donate at one point. Um, we did get some donations, but it really wasn't a whole lot. And um, what Ron said earlier about your connection with St. Mark's, um, something that the Media Food Bank has done on their Facebook page, um, they have a lot of, apparently a lot of businesses that are connected to them that will donate regularly so they've set up a system where business A donates lemons and business B donates carrots. And so that they always know what they're gonna be donating and they just have to let them know how much they need. So um, that, that may be something to consider with 
say marks and talk to them like is there something you need on a consistent basis hmm. yeah usually they don't even know when we've been there we just drop the stuff off <laughs> you know they don't know <laughs> so, things are from us uh, well i bet you they know uh, no, because they did, they have a twenty four hour contactless drop off shed. Right, we, I know that uh, little door you just opened. <laughs> no. yeah. Well, then maybe contact her and see like right what's their specific need. Sure. Week or or two weeks from now, what would you like us to bring? But donating in your own area is very important because it just makes it easier for you. Nobody wants this to be something hard, and. Um, there are needs in every area, even in Radnor. I had to contact someone about summer meals because there's a pocket in Radnor where they they needed the summer program. Mm -hmm. And you would think Radnor wouldn't need it. Yeah. Yeah, but right now it's everywhere. Right. Especially, I mean, always, but. It is everywhere. Did any of our people have any more questions while we've got them uh, this unusual opportunity? Well, it, it kind of sounds like we as Marple Church people, um, we need to be in contact with St. Mark's more on a one-to-one -one kind of deal. Uh, I mean, and I know uh, I can do that through Bill with Maria because they're both in Rotary together. So. If, if it means a weekly contact with her and me asking what they need, and then I could, you know, come back and say, okay, for the next month, they're going to need peanut butter, jelly, and cereal. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and then we could do it that way. Um, uh, I think that would be a great idea because then it's targeted. Okay. Otherwise we had, um, we followed through with, I'm not sure, Somebody from, from Die Fan specifically, we'd asked earlier about, and the, the answer had been like the kid friendly, the kids are home foods. So right. we had done a push for that. So I think we yeah. probably overloaded them on mac and cheese and spaghettios <laughs> or something. But uh, I don't think you can ever have too many, too much mac and cheese. <laughs> no. Or spaghettios. Or yeah. spaghettios. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, when, when we go purchasing food, we like to buy the spaghettios with wrap with meatballs and the raviolis with meat so any of those canned things that have meat we purchase those um and they're important because um some of our families don't know how to cook mm -hmm. so um it is an issue um and we are we are aware of it we've tried to get the penn state extension to come in what before covid to kind of do some mini cooking and mini education um, if we ever seem to leave COVID, it would be great to kind of resurrect that and get that going again. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for being interested, um, being willing to reach out to Maria maybe on a more frequent basis to see what her needs were. And please do not feel that, um, you know, I heard you say something about, well, we're just kind of helping the local pantry. Maria is wonderful yeah. about um, sharing her resources you know, and getting them out there. So you are actually touching more than just uh, the Broomall Marple area. So thank you so much for uh, doing that and, and looking out for people's needs. And and is the August 4th a definite in-, in Not yet. So, not yet, okay. Now I'll put it on the Die Fan site. It's, uh, if any of you are on Facebook, that's why I find all the information about Die Fan. Uh, so if there's any food, drives coming up or whatever, we put it on there. And just so you know, the county has done, I think it's 18 food drives, um, yearly food drives, and we usually do those in the fall. Uh, I think this fall is gonna be a lot different. So I don't think we're gonna be doing <laughs> that same kind of food drive. Yeah. So, um, but we would do a food drive and we would deliver to the pantries. We have two drop-offs. And our largest one was 40,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Last year it was 30,000 pounds of food. So, um, and that donations from county staff, people going to their libraries, um, some businesses, we would get donations from, from a couple corporations, Wawa and, and a bank, and then we would go buy food. So, 
um, that was really um, wonderful to see happen. Uh, this year, it was on proposed. We were going to change it up a little bit. So now we have to change it up a little bit. So um, that's going to be a little bit different this fall because I just think we're just going to be doing food drives from now till Christmas anyway. Hmm. It, it'll just be all different. You mentioned about a financial buying food. Um, for those of us who really at one point are not physically able to pick up a case of something and deliver it, what, where can we send a check or something like that? Okay. Um, if I can say it easier yeah. than I can. I mean, if you want to specifically donate to the DIFAN food pantries, um, that would be processed through Family Community Service of Delaware County. Um, and so donations could be made on our website, which is fcsdc.org, um, Family Community Service Delaware County.org. Um, and um, when you do an online donation, um, there's a drop down list where you can specify where you want your funds to go. And one of the options is the food program. Um, so uh, you can designate and it will go to the food programs. And what's really nice about that is Ron gets it that day. You know, the, the money's in his account mm. the same day. Yeah, when we've done it through Facebook, a month it and a half later, we yeah. see the funds. <laughs> that, so. that was not the way to go. So we, we chose not to do that way again. Can yeah. you just tell me that website just one more time? Um, it's the initials for family and community service um, dot org. So F C S D C dot org. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Brittany. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we have a Zoom expert. We're all becoming Zoom experts, aren't we? <laughs> oh, the county uses Teams, so it's different. Oh, the learning curve was a little steep, but we're all getting there, I think. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Well, we're almost at our end. So uh, is there anything else that you as our guests would want to be sure that we hear as a takeaway. Um. The, the one takeaway I would say is that um, food is not just a COVID need. Um, these needs existed before COVID. Um, they will continue to be a need after COVID. Um, and it just happens to be at this time, um, a lot of communities are becoming more acutely aware of how much food insecurity there is. I agree with Ron. And just to say that um, if you know of a neighbor who's in need, reach out to them. See if you can go to the store or um, refer them if they need emergency food box. You know, we'd be happy to help. We've been trying to do that. We've been trying to have eyes on people and it's harder than usual. <laughs> It, it is very important because they don't want to answer the door. They don't want to, they don't want to talk to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Even at least within our own congregation, we're trying to really have uh, getting people on Zoom or calling them, uh, you know, just trying to be sure that we know what the needs are. It's harder, harder than usual. And to echo what Jessica said, thank you so much for reaching out to us. This is the first time that we've been asked to do any kind of presentation, either Zoom or in person. And uh, this was really good for us too. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Uh, glad that we could do it. And uh, you're, you're the first one in our experimenting with uh, doing things this way also. So I uh, very much appreciate your time and your expertise and your service to the community. Um, so. Thank you very much. Anybody else need a final word in here? Before we I, was just, I was just gonna say, if you have further questions, um, you have our email, our contact information, and you're connected to the DIFAN website, please um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any concerns or things that we might not have answered this evening. Thank you so very much. <laughs>
And uh, good night, everybody. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.